I think we're live. Are we live? We're live. Are we live? I think we're live. Hey, Napa. <laughs> Cheers. Here's is going live. Cheers. Cheers. Are we going live, live over there? We're not live over here yet. Why? Will it send you a notification when we're live? No, we're live. It's live right now. For some reason, it has a picture. Oh, it doesn't have a picture. All right. Here. Welcome to Speak Easy with Jace for today. It is uh, January 7th, 2020. Is this our first one of the year? It is. Yes. It's our first speak it's our easy first of the year. Easy of the year. So we have some great content for you guys on how to change it. Well, really for you to understand what made you you and then how to change you so that you could have the life you want. Susan McGrath, good to see you. Glad you tuned in. What's up, Susan? Susan's my buddy who we meet over at Clairvoyant for beers. Ah. And uh, eventually I will go take dance lessons with her. Betsy and, and I will. And you drink enough to become Clairvoyant. Yes. <laughs> That's how good their beer is. <laughs> so, um, so uh, wow, so much news to share with you guys. Some of it I'm not willing to let out of the bag yet, but I got to tell you, big things are brewing in my life, and my life is going to be changing big time uh, very, very soon. In the meantime, uh, while Diane is doing that, happy Hi. new year to you guys, and I hope it's an awesome new year. And I'm really excited about this this live because we're going to get right to the point after you know we'll come at you a little and they get right to the point because i'm seeing some of the people are super excited about 2020 but i haven't seen a lot of people saying that and i've seen some people saying oh i'm so glad 2019 is over by and large though it seems like a lot of people are just like meh or there and I'm not sure what that's about. I don't know if it's because of what's going on in Iran. I don't know if it's because 2019 for a lot of people was pretty decent. And so they think it's going to keep being decent. I don't know. It doesn't matter. All I know is this. I want you to make it the best 2020 you possibly can. I want to uh, give you some tools so that you really have the capacity to change and then share with you some stuff we're doing that if you want to make a change, could help you make big, big changes in your life. Um, so in the meantime, got some exciting news to share. I, um, wow, I don't even know where to start. I, we hired a company, <clears throat> Thought Leaders Agency, shout out to Jim and Lucas, and they're helping us set up our web stuff and funnels. And we had one of our first calls with their team yesterday. It was great. And we have like a five hour intensive with them next week. Uh, Bob Donnell tuned in. What's up, Bob Donnell? It's good to see you. My friend Bob is spending more and more time here. So I think you guys will see Bob more and more on future future um, uh, lives that we'll be doing and other trainings. We're always looking to expand our team of coaches. My mom just tuned in. Hello, mom. Hello, Diane Souter. And um, boy, I just have so many cool, surprising things to share over the next month. But I have to keep them on the down low real quick. So um, just not trying to tease you guys, but I want you to, well, David Purdue just clicked in. David Purdue is one of my favorite people. He's one of the creators of NAMS, Novice Advanced Marketing Systems. Absolutely love him. So I'm just not even sure where to start with uh, uh, Bob Herod. Good to see you, Bob. Long time no see. So um christy walker what's up christy's gonna be coming to dynamic life i'm so excited i'm wearing dynamic life in uh response to um well in prep for today's live so uh are you almost done that you can Last come back one. on camera she's so what diane's doing she's sharing out the stream we have the rhino behind us today our beautiful rhino there's no new art in the house we i did move stuff around but we do have the welcome sign going for you guys and i want you to know Come at evening or at morning, come unexpected or without warning. A thousand welcomes you find here before you, and the oftener you come, the more will adore you. Check this out. Alexa, welcome light green. I love it when she does that. Hey, she works. Hi, awesome. Alexa, welcome light sky blue. I don't know how to do that. Alexa, welcome light blue. <laughs> oh boy. Well, at least she worked once. She's learning. She's still evolving. So happy yeah. new year. Happy new year. What's happy new, 2020. What's new? Happy 2020. What's new in you? Let's catch up and then let's jump into training. What's new? And what's new in... with you guys at home? Post. How yeah. was your new year? I hope it was happy, safe, and wonderful. And what's what's like really new for your new year? And what are you going for this year? 
Oh my gosh, Harold Malloy joined. What's up, brother? Long time no see. Most talented healer I think I've ever met, Harold Malloy. Really? What yeah. kind of healer? He, I started out doing massage and then he came through our events and we figured out that he could read people's body language and see what was going on with them because he was so tuned into like meeting people like where they're hurt, upset, locked down. And then he started applying um, like hypnosis and change work and uh, release work and created his own events. Just amazing. We had a client who she was going to have back surgery and Harold worked with her and had her release this like deep seated emotional stuff, you know, because mm -hmm. all emotions show up in the body as physical ailments or physical strength and all ailments in the body can be a reflection of something off emotionally or physically, uh, mentally that's buried. So anyway, he worked with her, she released it, no back surgery. Like nice. totally healed it. It was incredible. Yeah, it was absolutely incredible. Like so awesome. So I, I'm attempting to uh, get the sign back to blue. I like the blue for the local blue. So, uh, <laughs> so what's new in yours and what's new in you guys? Please post below. Let us know in the comments what's new with you. Who, um, who else joined? Eli joined. What's up, Eli? <laughs> Alexis is still waking up. Erica joined. Hey, Erica. Wow, what a nice group we have. Uh, we're going to jump into the training in just a moment on what made you you and then how to change it. And in the meantime, what's new with you? Not much is new with me. I, I started the year off great with an amazing staycation, mm, which staycation. was awesome from last Thursday until last Sunday. Ooh. We did a vacation where we came back to Boise and slept each day, but each day we went out to hot springs oh, and hiking and just kind of got off the grid and away from people. And it was really nice. How far really did you have to nice. hike to the hot springs? Um, some are close. One of them was like a mile in the snow, mm -hmm. but it wasn't bad because when you got there, there was so much steam. You could like walk around and be fine in your mm. bare feet. And there are some parts that were so hot you couldn't even touch. And um, I already knew about the naked precedent, but I got to learn about it firsthand, which is interesting. Do you know about the naked precedent? Um, that people go naked at hot springs? Yes, but whoever gets there first gets to set the precedent. No, so you, I've never heard this. Yeah. So in Idaho, there's a lot of hot springs that you pay to go to. I'm going to start that in my living room. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Not on work days. That would be inappropriate. So, um, yes, we work from Jace's living room very often. But if you, if you go to a, not a pay hot spring, so not the kind of the pool, but just the hot springs where they're in the different little made pool or not man-made Like pools, natural, natural, natural pools. ones. Whoever gets there first, if they get in with their swimsuit on, then anyone who comes after is still supposed to wear their swimsuit or some sort of clothing. But if they get in naked, then they've set the precedent that it can be a naked hot spring. And so you can get in naked or you can leave your swimsuit on. So it's, it's called the naked precedent. That's good to know. Yeah. It's really good to know. So yeah. don't, if you go to a hot spring, somebody already has their swimsuit on. Don't just go take all your clothes off. Yeah. And for the, for the record, it's, <laughs> we're not doing that living room. <laughs> um, and uh, we have, so we have clients coming up in May for one of our intensives where we write presentations. And if they come up a day, Early, we're going to take them out to the hot springs, but we go to commercial ones. And for the record, all the commercial ones are fully closed. Um, I don't know. If it, Not well, Twin Springs. Okay, all the commercial ones we're taking people to are fully closed. <laughs> so for the record, we will be going to fully clothed hot springs. Um, hot springs are my happy place. I love hot springs. By the way, I got the sign back to blue. And um, I want to show you guys some stuff in the house, just talking about New Year that I think is pretty cool stuff. But real quick question for you guys. Um, how long can I leave the tree up before I have to take the tree down? Negative 10 days at this point. I'm kind of wanting Jesse <laughs> to have to come back and take it down with me. But here's what I do want to show you guys that, um, that Diane gave me as a gift that I love. If you've been watching our lives, you know that we experienced this amazing flower when we were in Los Angeles. And this flower only blooms one night her bloom and it's like this sacred plant um, from India and we also saw it in the movie Crazy Rich Asians they had like a whole party because it was blooming and as a gift Diane got one from the guy in 
um, Atlanta, in LA, in LA, no, sorry, not Atlanta. And she got it to, to root for me and here it is. And so hopefully within a year or two, this thing will bloom and we'll have these like sacred blooms. And it's one of the most beautiful smells I've ever smelled in my entire life. Do you remember the name of that plant, what it was called? I know, I don't know the um, plant name, but if you look up Queen of the Night, you can get the plant name. The plant name is some big, long Latin. Queen of the Night. I like that. Queen of the Night. It, we thought when the guy told us about it, it would just bloom at night, but it turns out each bloom blooms once ever and then folds up and goes away. It's just amazing. And it's very pregnant. Oh, <laughs> what? Do you not remember that? No. He was telling us that it was very fragrant, but he had a very thick accent. Pregnant. We all thought he was saying pregnant. I thought he was it's saying it would get pregnant. women pregnant. Is what it's he pregnant. Saying. It's very pregnant. <laughs> so Eli yeah. says, I'm usually back to back calls on Tuesdays, but had time today. So I'm happy to join. New stuff for the year. We're a total revamp of our main program. That's really adding a ton of value. Awesome. We are Woo! clients of Eli's and Eli's a client of ours. She sponsored one of our events. We're a big fan of his. We're Absolutely. putting in the follow-up. Betsy said she made her first vision board, Go 2020. Awesome, Betsy. Ah! Um, and then Heather That's Wilson another joined. That's thing we did on our staycation was make a vision board. Oh, did you really? What mm -hmm. was on your vision board? I'm not telling. Okay, then. <laughs> no, just goals. Uh -huh. Yeah, goals. Mm -hmm. Can you maybe see that one closer so I can read it? Maybe a sailboat. All right, real quick, let's do Diane's date update, and then we're going to go into our training for the day. We did my date update. I went on a staycation. Was that the date update? Steven and I are now face Facebook official, so if you want to go troll around his Facebook, just go into the About Diane and the relationships, and you can find him, and you can stalk him a little bit. Well, you know... We happen to be on Zoom, so we can screen share and just do this live. That's true. Should I he do, do you have want much on there? Do you want people to know who this guy is? I mean, sure. they're gonna all right, let's Why do not? it. Let's go. Facebook. Ah, Google Chrome. All right. Steven Sprinkle. 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 Not to be confused with Bob. No, Don't Bob's know. here. Bye. Okay, so and Steven Sprinkle. Sprinkle, let's see, let's go to the about, and oh, we're guess. not friends. I need You're friend not friends. friends. Nope. Oh. 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 Details about family relationships. No info to show. Because you're not friends. Oh. Because you're not friends. You go to it on my Sprinkle. Hurry up and accept my friend's request so that we can embarrass. All right. Well, if we're sharing this, <laughs> should I do my tell? part of Diane's date update? What's your part of my date update? Well, I'll show you. So talking about <laughs> Facebook and people posting things, Betsy, I hope it's okay. I show this and, um, you know, whatever. We don't have secrets. So Betsy just posted this on her Facebook. I think there was no mention of me on Facebook. She has like a private, her family has a private Facebook group with like 125 members. So I think she talked about me on there, but she just posted this. And it is, I have found the one whom I love with all my heart. So that's my date update is that Betsy and I are now super official, like beyond official. Here's us at, um, uh, we will, when we went to Kanye's Christian concert. Here's us uh, at our first time out eating and like watching sports. Aww. Here's we went on the Tada run on Thanksgiving. Is she in a? She's in the Chewbacca. Wookie. Yeah, Chewbacca. I was gonna say Wookie, but yeah, Chewbacca. No, it's Chewbacca's uh, a Wookie. There's Napa. Uh, she even included Napa. And then here's our on uh, Freak Alley, which has all these paintings of Boise. It's a really it's great beautiful. place for photos. And then here's us out chopping down our tree. Um, oh, New Year's Eve, the practice New Year's Eve concert, flying somewhere. And yeah, the, this right here is so, I'm pointing like you guys can see, this is so cool. In Indiana, where um, a Christmas story was set, mm -hmm. there's a chamber of Macy's did a Christmas story window display and that little town bought the window display and they show it every Christmas season 
in this little town. Aww. So you can go there and see the Christmas story window display and it tells the story of the movie while you're in Indiana. It's really Very fun. Nice. And this was our fancy meal we had in Chicago before we went to see a concert. Chick-fil-A? Yeah, Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. We ran out of time. I'd been sick that day. And then here's was right after that concert at uh, the Chicago Theater. <laughs> so we are official. We are totally um, out there. Facebook, Facebook official, official now. So that is my date update. So... Let's jump into the training, unless you wanted to add something else yeah. before we do the training. Well, the only thing I was gonna say is your coffee mug here. So in 2020, are you gonna get one that says 50 is the new 40? 50 <laughs> is the new 35. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you had that mug? Um, I think since I was 40, so nine, nine years, almost 10. Really, you're enjoying that one, aren't you? <laughs> I am, I'm enjoying it. Smash that like button if you want to. So let's move into today's training. <laughs> so here's what I want to talk about. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. All right. Whatever, you started it. Come on, my, my daughter's becoming a teenager. I'm learning facial expressions from her. Yeah, right. Like, How fun is that? Oh, we got her daughter's. Betsy picked them out. Really cool presents, if I must say so myself. They are beautiful. They match their personalities perfectly. One is a painting. Let's hope Rosie's first. Yeah. Yeah. One's a painting of a woman holding up a mountain range on her back like this. And it says, uh, beautiful lady, you have the power to move mountains. Yeah. And which, which we wanted because she's what, uh, 12? She will be a 12 She'll in 12. February. So she's in that impressionable age of starting to get her power or lack of it. And we really mm -hmm. wanted to like give her something that would inspire her to get her strength. And you've, if you guys have been watching, you met her daughters on the shows and Betsy found that it was just perfect because yeah. we want her to believe, and I want all people to believe that you really do have the power to move mountains, that you are strong. Absolutely. Yeah, really. yeah she loves that one. And then Dorothy's has stars all over it. And it says, always use your powers for good. And she took one look at that and she went, I have powers. <laughs> <laughs> Which is awesome. Which is great, but also because she is the more mischievous one of the two. Yeah. It's a good it's, thing it said use your powers for good. <laughs> yes. Because she's very powerful. She's a very good negotiator. Yeah, right. Let's <laughs> say negotiator for, for uh, the good. All right, who joined? Good Heather joined. Rebecca Albrecht, good to see you. Amy, good to see you. Melissa Daniels joined. Good. Robert Joyce, good to see all of you. All right. Excellent. So here's today's training. What made you you and how do you change? So here's where this context came from. I have gone to a boatload of seminars and trainings and events. Um, can I prove this stuff scientifically? I believe science is starting to catch it. Some of it is based on um, my experience where I really formed the theory you're about to hear is uh, I, I used to do an event called The Bridge, which is a three-day intensive. And our upsell was a really intense four-day growth thing called The Limited Weekend, where we would bring in a group of hypnotherapists. All my friends were coaches and hypnotherapists. And for every two attendees, we'd have one coach. And so the attendees would get three or four one-on-one -on -one hypnotherapy sessions over the course of the weekend. And our hypnosis isn't just like some random little programming thing. It was deep core reprogramming of like deep issues in their life. And like one session, maybe it's about an hour and a half, could be incredibly life-changing for people and draining emotionally because you just change so much, release so much emotion. So part of what we did a limited weekend too, that was cool. We rented it, we did it at a beach house and we, um, so people could go out and get in the water or on the sand in between sessions. And we hired chefs to come in and do all the food. So people didn't have to do anything for themselves. They were just catered mm. to, they could play full out and then just be like uh, a puddle and then just be loved on and fed and then go into their next section. And we had group, small group sessions. So through doing these, I have been learning a lot about hypnosis and I've been studying a ton of different modalities of healing, going through a crap load of seminars. And here's what I discovered. We have an originating incident for our life. Now, let me explain what originating incident is and, and ask questions if you do, because you, if you have a question, probably the audience does as well. So let me explain originating incident in hypnosis terms. Um, for most of life, 
your blank slate and you have no programming that tells you how to react to things. It's just blank. And we learn and are programmed with how to react to things. So uh, a reaction, a, a story I have that might sound kind of gross, but uh, when I was a little kid, I found a roach. And <laughs> the roach is crawling across the floor. And I was a little guy. I mean, kindergarten probably, right? And I just thought it was like a toy, like a, like a wind-up car or something. I mean, I can remember look, looking at it and so my blank slate was i had fun with toys that you could wind up and they would go and so here's something that's going so my little brain said oh it was wound up and it's going it's a toy so i picked it up by the antenna and its little legs are going and i'm just like look it's fun mm -hmm. so that's my programming then when we have a highly peaked emotional experience, the more intense our emotions, the deeper the programming goes. And what can program us is what other people say and do, things that happen around us and ways we feel. And the more emotion that's present, the deeper the programming goes. So I think this thing's just a toy, right? So I, I turn to my mom and I go, mom, look. Oh boy. And my mom <laughs> goes, ah! It like jumps back and screams, right? So she has a reaction like this thing is bad and your parents are your first hypnotists. And so what's the subconscious, the unspoken communication, that thing's bad, get rid of it. It's bad enough for her to scream and go, ah. So my little brain, and I remember, I just felt it go through my body too. My body, I go from, look at this toy to, ah, is my reaction. And I remember going, I don't know what's bad with this thing, but it must be bad at dropping it and jumping back. <laughs> and so what got programmed into me is when you see a roach, the reaction is, ah, and that roaches are, ah, and that should be our reaction to roaches. Well, I had been a blank slate before that, but that was my originating incident to program me with how to react. So mm -hmm. within programming, uh, and here's how I teach it. There's a, Anthony Robbins says we have three states. We have our physical, mental, emotional. And what I say is in programming, there's always three programming that happens. We have a physical reaction to get programmed in. We have an emotional reaction. And remember the emotions in the body are combined. And then we have a mental reaction, i.e. we say something. So what got put into me in that moment was the emotion of ah and freaking out. Uh, what I felt in my body is like a cold rush, like a cold wave go through me and like a tingle going here out into my arms. And then the words in my brain were like, this is bad. I don't know why it's bad, but it's bad. Get rid of it. Move away from it. Like mm -hmm. that kind of translated into a word. So if I see a roach today, that's still my first reaction is ah, because that's what got programmed in and I haven't done the work to break it. I haven't thought it was important enough to break it. Plus it makes a good story. So, <laughs> <laughs> so here's what's important for you. I need to get some toy roaches. That's so not funny. <laughs> okay. It will be. It's kind of funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> right on a Facebook Live. Won't that be fun? So, um, hey, who else joined? Natalie Laylock joined. Good to see you. Anna Bernal White right joined. Good to see you guys too. We've got over here. Here, I'm going to show them. I think I show you guys also different ones, but we have like the stream over here so we can see who's like commenting and stuff. And then over here, we just have where we're filming. Oh my gosh, you know, I just realized we need to put something at the bottom of the cups because when I drink, <laughs> somebody says, like, you're loved. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be cool. So, I'm going to share with you what formed your entire life and then how we can use these tools to change your life and then to change the lives of others. And remind me to talk about the school in Ghana, please. So, it. um, so that's how it worked with the roach. So now, um, trigger warning, if you're someone who uh, has little ears around, perhaps uh, put your ear pods in, your AirPods in or you know headphones. Um, I'm not gonna get too visceral and I'm gonna share some stuff that's kind of adult. So um, I'll start with an easier example. And, and the way I started discovering this thing about your originating incident for life is at the Illuminated Weekend, I'm doing sessions with people and we would do what's called regression therapy. And typically what happens is 
someone like so let's pretend someone has an issue with money and today like as they're living going through the world they're having issues with money what you're dealing with in life is not what you're dealing with what i mean by that is what you're dealing with in this moment in life right now probably is an echo and a reflection of something that happened way in your past and is regurgitating itself in your present and causing the problem to happen. In other words, what's causing you a problem in the moment isn't what's causing you the problem, it's what happened in the past that had you recreate the problem or relate to it in a certain way. This will make more sense as I go on, it may or may not sense, make sense in this moment. Did that make sense? Yes. Okay, so, so going forward, um, I worked with this woman who had money challenges. And so we did a regression and, and we saw different times in her life. She could, her phrase was, she, she could just never get ahead with money. Either she would make money and then bill showed up. She didn't expect and the money goes away, or she would sabotage good money making opportunities, or she would make money, but it just, it, it was never enough. Like just, she never felt like she could get ahead. So we go regress, regress. And finally we get back to, the originating incident of her life with money. And for different areas of life, you have originating incidents. You have one with sex, you have one with, with your spirituality, you have one with money, you have one with your body, you have one with your happiness level. And I believe you have like one core one for your entire life. So <clears throat> we go to regression. And so let me do a screen share because I want to point some stuff out to make sure this really lands. So if this access right here, equals just being neutral, like emotionally neutral, right? And so this is peak of emotion, like how intense the emotion is. Then this below the line equals how deep the programming goes. So if someone has a little emotion, just a little bit of programming. But if they have a highly peaked emotional experience, and this is critical, you are the ultimate hypnotist. You can only be programmed with things that you repeat to yourself and believe is true. Now, what can make someone else seem to be your hypnotist when I said uh, your parents are your first hypnotist? Well, parents are authority figures. So let's look at what goes into making program work, programming work. So what works is authority, relationship, certainty, and emotionally peaked. This is just a short list. So in authority, are your parents an authority? Are your parents, are people's parents an authority when they're a little kid? Yeah, when absolutely. Little. Do they have a relationship? Mm -hmm. And a huge relationship of dependency. And then yeah. the way parents tend to talk to kids, there's a lot of certainty. And then I'll talk about emotionally peaked in a moment. Now let's talk about, um, for those of you that are speakers and or using speaking to sell your business, if you want to program the audience, these tools that I'm sharing with you also work to program the audience. Now, hopefully you're program the audience to take positive actions to make their life better. What will we'll make you more powerful on stage and able to program people on a deeper level, i.e., program them to buy, program them to take certain actions, program them to uh, change their life if you're someone who's in change work. Well, the more authority you can have and the more emotionally peaked you get them, the deeper the programming get goes. So let's do a little checklist. As a speaker, what you can do to make yourself more powerful, it has more authority. Write a book, have an intro video, show that you're an expert, have a list of letters after your name or show that you have testimonials and videos and proof that you're great at what you do. Also, one of the powers of speaking is simply speaking gives granted and implied authority. The fact that you're on stage, period, by itself alone, says you're an expert in something. Mm -hmm. Now, use your forces for good, because if you don't, it could go really bad. What? I don't know if you mentioned this, but for authority, for me, it, having a team. Like, when I see somebody who has a team, like clearly this person needs a team of people to um, yep. to like attend to them. And that really speaks authority to me. Yeah. So like, for, and, and let's go for an example. Let's suppose someone is going to be like a business coach for you. And 
you don't know who they are. You see no website, no book, no CDs, no workbooks, no three-day seminar. Eh, they could be the best, but are you going to listen or not? Maybe not. Now let's suppose the CEO of Coke says, I'm going to consult with you. So the CEO of Coca-Cola. Yeah. A, you know, <laughs> the guy might know nothing or the woman might know nothing. But the fact that she's the CEO, there's huge authority. So you're going to be like, I'm listening. Mm -hmm. Now, other ways to build your authority as a speaker, everything Diane just said, have a team, have an event, be on stage, get published, have products, have testimonials. So that's authority. Next one, relationship. How close are you? If you want to be a speaker and have more influence, have a relationship with people, get closer, let them know you either digitally or through videos, Facebook lives. Um, and one-on-one -on -one relationships, make relationships. Next one, be certain. If you see someone speak and they're like, well, maybe this will work. Or if they're like, this is going to work. Uh, Anthony Robbins says the one who's more certain and has more energy in a sales presentation will win. And sales is really just programming. Sales is inspiring and programming people or bringing out the programming in them that they can do this and giving them an opportunity to fulfill on what's important to them. That's all sales is. And then there's an exchange of goods or services or value in order to make the transaction happen. Next one is get emotionally peaked. Um, one of the things that we say in speaking is laughs times tears equals sales. If you get no laughs and no tears, you make no sales or very minimal sales compared to what you could be. So mm -hmm. The more you can inspire people to think about greatness and the more you can touch their heart by sharing rough times that you triumph through, the more you'll move people emotionally and the more open they will be to program. So now let's take this back to the story of this woman's originating incident with uh, money. So her, her phrase was, I can never get ahead. And that meant she would you know, blow it or she would not make it or she would sabotage it, or she would just not be satisfied. So we do this regression and we go back. Have I told you the story already? I've I heard this, this story. Okay. I, I tell this one at that. So we go back and she remembers being a little girl and her mom gave her her first purse and she had some, some money in there, first purse. And they're in the changing room together and they leave after changing. And she realizes she left her purse in the changing room. Well, I don't know about you, but when I get some, like my CPAP, I have like a breathing machine I use at night to sleep. I left it on the curb at the airport. It wasn't used to carrying it around. You know, I, it's, I wasn't used to that being part of what I would carry. So it just, I think it would be normal. She could leave that purse. Yeah, absolutely. So she leaves the changing room and they're in the somewhere after they left the changing room and she realizes she lost her purse. Is a woman or a little girl's first purse important to her? Absolutely. What does it mean to them? It means responsibility and growing up and womanhood. Yeah. And even if she's a little girl, it's like a taste of that, right? So the fact that she lost it, would that be emotionally peaking? Yes. So let's run through our checklist. So she is now going to be emotionally peaked a little or a lot. Quite a bit. She's gonna be huge emotionally peaked. So she's very open to programming because her emotions are like up here, like really high up. So now she's like super open emotionally. So what is said to her that she believes to be true or what she says to herself about herself, and this is really critical, what she says about herself, about life, will become a deep core belief and relationship to money for her. So she tells her mom, oh my gosh, mom, I lost the purse and she's crying. And her mom bends down. Is her mom an authority? Yes. So now we have authority, that box checked. Are they in relationship? Yes. That box is checked. And her mom, now we don't know what her mom actually said, but this is what the little girl heard. Her mom said, you left your purse. You will never be good with money. And she said it with certainty. So the phrase that her mom said, and then the little girl repeated to herself is, you will never be good with money. And now here's where it gets really nasty. 
So this, because, did you have a comment on that? <laughs> so this right here is now the core belief of her life in relationship to money, that she will never be good with money. So all that happened was she lost a purse, but here's where it gets, here's where it gets like her life was formed in relationship to money because this is now her program of not just the description of that moment, but this becomes how life must be. This becomes her core program with how life must be. So not, it, not only is she, not only does she have the experience of losing her purse, but in that highly peaked emotional state, she got programmed that she will never be good with money. So now we go forward in life and it's, she was highly peaked, deep programming, that's how life must be. So now we're over here somewhere and she has the opportunity to make a boatload of money and she's about to do a real estate deal and crush it, but then her deepest programming comes up and it's kind of like the deepest, seedest programming runs the show and how life must be is you will never be good with money and making a crap ton of money would get rid of this. So instead she subconsciously sabotages the money or she does good with money and she makes some money. But if she looks at the money and says, hey, I'm good with money, that's in direct conflict with this. And this is deeper seated that you'll never be good with money. So what she has to do is look at this and go, it's not enough. It's not really good enough, even if it was good enough. So check this out. She's a little girl and she starts saving money. Now, if she got a piggy jar this big, she might fill it up. And if she fills it up, then that might say to her that she's good with money. So she subconsciously has to put a, a, a foundation in place that will sabotage her so that she will never be good with money. So she actually gets like a footlocker at the end of her bed and she starts trying to fill that up with coins. How long would it take to fill up like a two foot by one foot by one foot footlocker with coins? Take a good, good amount of time. 20, I, I have a jar in there and it's just like a, a nice vase and it's filling up and that's been a few years. I right? have a penny jar that's this round and this tall and it's only about halfway full of pennies and I've had it since I was a kid. There you go. <laughs> so subconsciously, she puts the footlocker in place to sabotage herself. And think about this. Unless that thing was made of like super strong metal, once she started to fill it, it probably would have busted apart and broke and the money would have gone all over the place. You, oh, see, I'm no good with money. So here's what's the trippy part. No matter what happens in her life, she either has to sabotage money so it's not good enough or look at it and say, you will never be good with money. And then financially her life gets built around never being good with money. No matter what she does, she would sabotage deals. She would pull them apart. And it just became a part of her subconscious program. No matter how much she made, it was never enough. Does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So here's what we did in the, in the programming is we discovered this. We discovered what was running the show and then I got her into a highly peaked emotional state. And in a repeated peak emotional state, we could replace the words and put in new programming. So in other words, what we did is we erased all of this stuff and we got it back to just a blank slate. And then in that blank slate, I got her peaked emotionally again. And then we put in new deeper programming where we wiped out what had been there and we put in the programming like, I have peace with money. Money is easy. I have enough. Now, a lot of times when you hear these stories, people might say things like, oh, and then they made a million dollars. Well, that's not what she did. What she did is she actually got a job just a nice solid job that made a good living and a good income. And I think the timing of that was perfect for her too, because we did this right before the recession hit in like 2007. So she just had a nice stable job. And out of that, she wanted to get married. She had a kid, some other really beautiful stuff happened. 
Here's the thing I want you guys to get though. Whatever this programming is down here, and this is where I'm gonna talk adult and uh, trigger warning, I'm gonna talk about serious stuff. Whatever it gets programmed in down here, if you see the mouse moving in weird spaces because I'm, I'm pulling up like pen versus text, whatever it gets put in down here tells people how to act and it shows up in their body. Well, let me re rewind. It tells people what to think, how to feel, and all of that shows up in how they act and how their physical body is held and moves. So one of the things for me that showed up like this was um, I, you know, I, by the way, I've been losing weight like crazy lately. It's been really cool. And, you know, I've had a belly for a long time. Well, one of the things that happened for me is I learned when I was lonely, so I was peaked emotionally, I could go to ice cream and I would feel better. And so the programming became eat ice cream to feel better. And so if I was feeling lonely or isolated or I was isolated or alone, I would go eat ice cream. And so I was also part of my deep seated programming was to feel lonely. And so I would go to ice cream a lot. And that's what this fat was from. It wasn't from just overeating. It was overeating because I was, that's the programming I had learned to deal with the emotions. Does that make sense? So that's one of the ways it shows up. So now here's one that I hate this and it's true. <clears throat> We're gonna do it. Make sure kids are listening. So Little kid's going through life, life is perfect, and this little kid gets molested. When a little kid gets violated physically like that, is there an intensity of emotion? An adult does it, there's an authority. And then the kid, the kid has to rationalize for themselves why it happened, and they define, and, and I actually left something out for here. If you want to program people, a big part of programming is physicality. If they're uncomfortable while you're talking as a speaker, they'll think that you're making them uncomfortable on a subconscious level and they'll attach that to your speaking. If on the other hand, and we do a lot of hugs and high fives and handshakes and fun music and a beautiful environment at our events, because if people feel great emotionally and if they feel great physically, they'll feel great emotionally and they'll attach that emotion to our offer and our programs. Plus, we want our programs to be a place where people come to feel great because we want to program people to feel great. So they leave and they feel great and then they go make others feel great. So that's part of our mission in life. So in programming, physicality. Well, when a kid's molested is their physicality. A ton. And then what the kid has to do is the kid has to figure out why this happened. And for a kid, it's all about them. They cannot make a distinction between themselves and the outside world. So if something bad happened outside, if, so something, <clears throat> in the world, they have to figure out they have to figure out what was wrong with them. And the reason they want to figure that out is then to then try to avoid the pain. It's, and it's, it's not that they'll avoid what happened, it's that they'll avoid the pain. So here's what sucks. If a kid gets molested, highly peaked emotionally, an adult did it, there's a lot of physicality, it definitely happened, there's a certainty, well, relationship, there's a physical relationship that happened, even if it was like a random rape or something, but it happens. So there is deep seated programming. And this kid says, what was wrong with me? And I can't tell you how many people I know and have done work with that have been molested that said, why me? What was wrong with me? And if you're a woman that's ever had a guy attack you or rape you, I want you to know something. I have worked with so many women that are really high powered, powerful, smart women. And every single one of them who had a guy attack them or beat them up or rape them or do anything to them, every single one of them was blaming themselves for not seeing it coming. 
That is not something that you have to see coming. If it happens to you, it's not your fault. That's something that ideally would never happen in this world. It does, but what I'll tell you, if you're a woman, it's happened to you, or a friend of yours, or a daughter of yours, or if you're a guy, it's happened to you, I'm going to request that you stop blaming yourself for not seeing it coming, and you let it go. Because on top of the guilt and shame of what happened, there should be no guilt and shame for what happened because you didn't do it, some jerk did it. And what happens is these awesome, and I'm saying women because I've really talked to women about this, not men. These awesome women who had like got beat up and stuff, they then blame them on top of all that pain that they're blaming themselves for not seeing it coming. And now they're just compounding it and getting into a prison. And I want to give you guys permission to get out of this prison. You shouldn't have seen it coming. The most powerful, smart women I've ever met have had something like this happen and they didn't see it coming. It's not something that could be, it should be coming, ideally. It doesn't mean you don't be smart. It doesn't mean you don't take self-defense. That's not my point. My point is I want you to look at, get out of that guilt and shame. So back to our story about a little kid. If a kid's molested, then they will answer why that happened. And what happens for a lot of kids is they come up with the answer that they're just, they're just a piece of crap. They're just not worth it. Here's what's worse. Remember I said when, when someone gets a deep-seated programming, that becomes how life has to be. Well, it also shows up in their physicality. Are you with me on this? Are you tracking all this stuff? Mm -hmm. So here's a, a a study I read that was really like shocking, but made the light bulbs go off for me. If a kid's been molested, it will show up subconsciously in the way they hold themselves. And they've done studies where they'll line up a bunch of kids. And in that lineup, they'll have a kid that was abused and in a separate room behind glass or whatever, they'll put someone who's an abuser and they can pick out the kid. I, I think it's because they have, then tuned in to find the subconscious cues and the physicality to discover, to see who those kids are. And I've known women who were abused multiple times and by visible people, like, how do they know? How do they know? Well, it's not your fault, but it shows up in the, in the, in the physicality. And now I want to take this to another level. If, if you know people that just keep dating jerks, whether they're men or women, but they're dating jerks, something happened at some point in their initial programming about life or in relationship to make them think that relationships are supposed to be with jerks. And then they're subconsciously attracted to jerks because that's how life is supposed to be. And some, the way that they react and the way they act in the world pushes away the good dating and attracts the jerks. So what I'm saying is, Whatever this emotional set point is for your life, whatever you have been programmed with down here, this isn't just an experience you have in the moment. And here's what it gets scary. This becomes what you will manifest the rest of your life. It doesn't mean that someone who is abused will manifest abusers, but it could mean that. But what it will mean is that pain of abuse will exist in their life and they will build their life to avoid that pain. So for example, how do some people avoid that pain? Well, they think everyone's an abuser and they shut down and they stay away from everyone. Other people think that they're a piece of crap and then they never go for something great. And then other people just turn off the emotion. And so what happens with a lot of people who have been abused is they become very desensitized to sexual encounters and they just have it with anyone and everyone because it doesn't mean anything anymore because they've turned off that part of their emotion to avoid experiencing that pain again. And all of this sucks and it's not fun to talk about. The reason I'm talking about this with you though is I want you to look at what's going on in your life right now. What's happening emotionally that's been happening over and over and over for years? What's happening physically that's been going on over and over for years? What's happening to you financially? What's in your relationships? What's happening with all of it? And I want you to get really present to it because if, if you don't do something about it, it's not gonna change. And you can do something about it. And that's what I'm gonna share next. Any thoughts, questions on any of that? Um, who else joined us? Well, I had a lot of people join us too. It's a weird time for shout outs, but it might be a nice time to break the emotion, right? Got kind of heavy. So uh, 
Natalie was in. We already said hi. Oh, Brenda Merrill. Hi, Brenda from, from Vegas. Good to see you. Christine White, good to see you. Michelle Sullivan, hi. Isaac Murphy, good to see you. Isaac. I'll see you in January, Isaac. Paul joined Zach Young. Man, Zach, long time to see, brother. I was just thinking about you the other day. So I know this stuff's heavy, and I think it's important. So mine used to be, so my originating incident, and I will draw mine now. Little kid, blank slate. And, you know, just little kid, blank slate. Were you a cute kid? Oh, it's adorable. You were adorable? Yeah. Can we see a picture? Yeah, let's see a little baby Jace. Uh, actually, let me see if I have it in here. Um, oh, don't tell me I don't have it. Okay, I got it, but you can't see it yet. Okay, so I want to tell this story first. Okay. So I'm a little kid, blank slate, and I don't remember this like uh, I remember yesterday, but I remember it kind of like a, a dream. It's kind of like a memory from a little, 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 little guy. And I remember um, my dad left. He went to the Vietnam War to go be a pilot in the war, which is a pretty admirable thing to do. He went to, to go fight in the war and he was shot down and he didn't come back. Not for a couple of years anyway, uh, from when he first went. So I kind of remember when my dad left. So is that highly peaked emotional state, the most important man in your life when your parents is leaving? So as I open a programming, deep seated open a programming. So here was my programming for my life. So my dad left and I wanted to go with him. But, you know, at that time, they wouldn't send six months old to go to the war. Yeah. So if you look at six months, really, you guys, I've done regression therapy. So uh, I believe from the moment of inception to like two and a half is when I think most of your programming actually happened. For most people I know like that, it's, it's formed by then. And then everything else reinforces it. So for instance, I had a, I did, I did regression. I did work with a woman who could not, she wouldn't swim in like dark, murky water. In a pool, she'd be okay, but like a lake, she wouldn't go. So we do regression, 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 we go back. Now listen, I don't know if she actually remembers what I'm about to tell you or she made it up in her brain. It doesn't matter because whatever your brain and your emotions believe to be true is true for you. If I put you into a deep hypnosis state, and I have you viscerally experience something. It's kind of like this. Have you ever had such a powerful dream? You wake up and you're like, whoa, was that real or not? Oh, yeah. I remember uh, I remember when I was in junior high, I had this dream about a girl in my class and I had a crush on her in the dream and we were dating and I woke up and I was like, do I like her? <laughs> you know, like, like I, it was so real. But have you ever had a dream so real? You're like, wait, was that real or not? Oh, absolutely. So we can put people in hypnosis and have them eat an onion and make them think it tastes like an apple. Because everything you experience here, 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 it goes and gets processed in your brain and in your heart. So if we can change the processing, it will change your experience of the world. This makes sense so far, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where was I going with that example before I went deeper? I was talking about- Your dad leaving at six months. I was gonna say something else, but all right, so my dad. So my dad, oh, so so it doesn't matter if I'm really remembering what happened or I'm imagining I remember what happened. What's important is that became the programming of my life and what's important to discover the programming and the pattern. So kind of like the earlier example with the girl in the purse, it wasn't necessarily what the mom said, it's what she heard. Yeah, and, and if we take it to a deeper level, theoretically, she dreamt the whole thing, but it became her programming around money. Theoretically, she just daydreamed that that happened. Does that make sense? So yeah. here's another quick example before I tell you mine. Uh, a woman I was deal I did a hypnosis session with, she just had really upset about relationships and being left and divorced and stuff, right? Well, we go back in her aggression. She's a little girl and she's watching TV. She's laying on the beanbag in the, in the living room. And, and um, mom says like, well, wait, you know, I think she was gonna, no, nothing happened. She's just watching TV and she fell asleep. And when she woke up, it was dark and no one was around and the TV was off. So she's a little girl, she wakes up, it's dark, it's no one around, highly peaked, scared, freaked out, feels abandoned. So in that moment, she has to figure out why it happened and then come up with strategies to make sure it doesn't happen. So, and here's the worst part, whatever that emotion she feels becomes her emotional set point for life on a very deep level. 
and she's going to try to avoid it, but we fail at avoiding it. So she feels abandoned. Well, probably what happened is she's a little girl sleeping and mom's like, let her sleep, you know? Mm -hmm. But for some reason this night she woke up and had the awareness to go, oh my gosh, no one's around. I'm abandoned. So I'm abandoned becomes her set point. So now she's in a marriage and that marriage is in direct conflict with I'm abandoned. So what has to happen to that marriage? She has to eject the marriage. All she did was fall asleep and made that up, but on a very deep visceral level. And then remember I'm abandoned becomes her set point. So she will keep continuing to manifest and act in ways where she will be abandoned. Or even if she's in a relationship, she'll constantly be on guard for being abandoned. And that's how our life gets built. So back to my story. Um, and then we'll share with you guys how to beat this. So share, let's go whiteboard. So dad leaves. And I don't get to go. I mean, it's reasonable I don't get to go, right? I'm a little kid. But dad leaves, I don't get to go. So what do I learn? I don't get what I want. And then I think, well, what was wrong with me that dad didn't take me? If he really loved me, he, wouldn't, he would have taken me. But he didn't take me. He must not have loved me. I'm not lovable. But maybe if I was bigger, maybe if I was bigger, but I wasn't, so I'm not enough. This becomes the core program of my life. And the worst part is not only do I experience life through this, but this becomes how I see life and the life I am programmed to create. So in other words, I put on like glasses that are red tinted and I see someone that I want to date, but this comes up, I'm not enough. Or I'm actually dating someone awesome, but I don't get what I want, so I have to reject it. Or I don't even ask because I'm not lovable. And like friends I wanted to meet, people I want to hang out with, business opportunities, I'm not enough, I don't get what I want, I'm not lovable, why even try? I can't tell you how many social occasions I went to before breaking this, where I, I wouldn't talk to anybody. I did. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if, if anybody knows Jace, Jace being in a social place and not talking to anybody is not, <laughs> is not a norm for him now. Well, Jace now. talks to everybody. Now. <laughs> well, I had to break, I broke it, but that's how I was before you guys. But here's the worst case. And, and I kind of draw people um, like, a projector screen, you know, like, and if you go to a seminar workshop, there's a screen. Well, what color is the screen? White. It's white. What color does the screen appear? Whatever color is being projected on it. Yes. So what I was projecting on all of life was red. So people showed up red to me and red meant they're not going to love me. I won't be enough for them. I don't get what I want. And he, you know, you know, in infomercials they go, but wait, there's more. Um, but wait, it gets worse. <laughs> this becomes my set point for life, and my subconscious and your subconscious gets built on this, on making sure this stays true. So let's just use the word red to not get what I want, not lovable, not enough. So I have a chance to date somebody and they're just a blank screen, but I don't get what I want. I'm not enough. I'm not lovable. You know, and maybe they really want to go out with me, but how will I see them as? Red. And I'll think, oh, they don't want to go out with me. But let's suppose I'm dating someone who's awesome and I actually am having what I want. What has to happen? Gotta change that red. Gotta eat. Yeah, but the red is deep seated. So I would, I can't tell you how many people I dated that were actually really awesome, but I thought they didn't really love me. So I bailed on the relationship. Or here's where it gets worse. 
they were great, but I couldn't see it because I had to make them wrong in order for, I don't get what I want, I'm not lovable, and I'm not enough to exist. But here's where it gets even worse. If this is how life has to be for me, and this becomes like its own living entity, like an alien living inside you that wants to exist, then what kind of people will I subconsciously be attracted to? The people who don't want you to get what you want, don't want you to be lovable and think you're not enough. Exactly. People who really aren't interested or aren't available. So remember I said how some people date jerks. I would either date great people and I just, I dated a few women in a row. <laughs> this is embarrassing to say. They were, <laughs> they were awesome women, but like their breath was horrible to me. And it wasn't about them. It was my subconscious affecting the way I experience life in order to invalidate them so that this could stay true. Or the other type of person I'd invite, I'd date was a totally emotionally and mentally unavailable person. Fun times, huh? Not so fun, is it? So that is how my life got formed. And so growing up, I either wouldn't go for it or it gets really old to not go for it. Mm -hmm. So then what we do, and this is where a lot of people teach motivation and I think it just stinks. What they do is like, go for it, you're enough, blah, 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 but it's all BS. So <clears throat> where I, um, where before, you know, like I wasn't enough and all that stuff was my way of living. So back to this. So this is how I lived and I wouldn't go for it, date the wrong people. Well, that gets really, really old. So then I would go to the other extreme and I'd be like, I'll show you I'm enough. I'll become a speaker. I'll have hundreds of people plotting <laughs> for me. I, and I, I can be very lovable and sweet and cute. Well, I learned to in reaction to this because otherwise I'd be super alone. And I'm not enough. Well, I became very entitled because no one was going to help me out. Or, so it became very much, F you, I'm going to get mine. So I was arrogant and entitled. So what happens is people go from one side to the other side, but there's no freedom. It's just two sides of the same coin. That's not true freedom. So like, for instance, I, one of my first mentors talked about how his family ran out of money and strangers had to give them money. And that was like his side over here was, was like no money. And he said, I will never be poor again. And he goes to this side. But no matter how many millions this guy makes, it's never enough. And he's doing coke and blow and drinking and um, addicted to sex and all this other stuff to fill the vacuum in his heart. And he never has peace. And he always has to go for more and more and more and more and more to try and fill this gap. And it never, ever, ever gets filled. And... I, this was me in relationships. I was so lonely that I would date someone. And when I was having sex was like, well, if she's having sex with me. She has to love me. She has to like me. And so I would like be addicted to that physical connection because it was the short time I felt love, but I would just bounce back and forth. And then I would find a reason to invalidate them and be alone, but then be with them and be alone. And it just, there's no freedom. It sucks. So how do we break this? What we do is we have to do something very, very similar to what we just did. So here's how, here's how it happened for me. A couple major things happened for me. One is I developed a model to discover this and I ran the model on myself and I got to see my originating incident. And then God moved in my heart and in such a super intense, deep thing. That's why I'm so passionate about God. God said, I loved you. And it overwrote that other thing. The other thing I did is I put myself into trainings and programs, including my own programs and hypnosis to where I got, and now we repeat what we did before, but we do it intentionally. I got into a very peaked emotional state, like super peaked emotional state, intentionally peaked emotional state. And in that state, I replaced the words that I was living my life by. And it didn't just happen overnight. I mean, part of it I became aware of at an Anthony Robbins date with Destiny. I did boatloads of events with Landmark. Um, I ran my own process on myself. God moved in my heart. You guys know I just went to a seven-day intensive in Tennessee. But what it does at a very intense moment, I got to replace the deep-seated programming and write a new script for my life. And I call this the script. 
And so my script now comes from a place of love and it's not like, a, it's just, I'm loved. And that like, God's got me. And so it doesn't matter what my outside life looks like now, I'm loved, just period, I'm loved. And this is why I'm so passionate about God being in your life because God's an uninterrupted source of love. And no matter what, I'm gonna be okay. And out of that space, then I could have an amazing marriage and relationship or not. And I'll be okay. And it's what I want, but it's out of that space. And now I can make more money because it's coming out of space of, I feel loved and everything's going to be okay. And then what happens is emotions are contagious. So when I didn't feel enough, I made other people feel like they weren't enough because I'm dating these awesome women, but I'm breaking up with them for stupid reasons. So I'm making them feel like crap. Emotions spread because the way we interact with others now my emotion is that I'm enough and I'm loved. So now I make other people feel enough and love. And when you say I talk to everybody, part of the reason I talk to everybody, it was a practice to get over the old programming. But more important than that, I want everyone to feel loved. So I want to talk to everybody, including the uncool people. Because I want to give them a glimmer of hope. So what I have developed, and the reason I wore this, if you're interested in shifting your deepest things, and look, your life might be pretty good, but something's nagging on the edges or you know that you were made for more, but you're butting up against that ceiling and you're ready to break through it. If you know that like your money has been stagnating and you've been stuck, we developed a four day intensive where I took all these different methodologies and this one thing I call the script to discover your core program for your life so that we can break it. And we have a methodology where we can do that in just four days. So what Diane's gonna do, she's gonna put it in the comments. She's gonna put it in the show description. And if you're interested, uh, let's put on that video too. There's a video I cut called Change Your Markers. It's about understanding how you were formed. But on there, you can see information about our event that's coming up at the end of January. And you could book a call, a private call with me to see if this could be a fit for you. And if you're interested, just PM me. And I know for someone watching, this is speaking to you and you've been repeating patterns or someone in your life has been repeating patterns. Like I just thought of someone I know who's a coach and they have such a great heart and they're just not making money and they're not helping people. And it's not because of their circumstances. It's because their level of confidence in who they are and their value to the world was programmed to be at a certain level. And so it's recreating itself. And when we break that, they will flourish. And that's what I want for you. If you've been stagnating with money, if you've been stagnating with love, if things have been sabotaged, maybe look, I, we can't, you know, legally, we can't promise anything with physicality is going to change for you or anything. And I've seen a lot of people lose a lot of weight after they let go of emotions. I've seen a lot of people heal physically after they let go of negative emotions. And I think you owe it to yourself to put that into your regimen, whether you do it with us or someone else, put it into your regimen to make a change. So back to this. So what we want to do is we put you in a highly peaked emotional state. How do we, oh, wrong share. So how do we do, how do we do that? Well, one of the things we do is we have conversations to get you there. We have processes to get you there. One of the things we do is we use a high ropes course because if we can get you peaked physically where you're going to be harnessed in, you're going to be totally safe, but your body still goes, holy crap, I'm way above the ground and your body gets fearful and has emotions flare. Then in that moment, what happens is we discover the deep seated words that were hidden to you. We then make them known. And then you got the opportunity to replace them and you're still in a highly peaked emotional state. So those new words become your new life. So now you have this new life that you actually love based on a script that you write. And that's how we do it in a process that's structured, that's formalized, that's safe, that works. And we've done this with hundreds of people and we know it works. So whether or not you work with us, you guys, this could be what's running your life is what I call the script. It could be that deep seated programming for you. Um, <clears throat> we, she showed me some notes about other things I was going to talk about, but I think I've told you guys enough stories that you get the point, right? Like you guys understand this concept now. So um, there could be real, real freedom in this for you, like tons of freedom. And what's really cool is remember I said, my new set point is that I'm loved that I'm enough, that God's got me. I can have what I want. Actually, having what I want is not even on my radar. It's just like, <laughs> it's not an issue anymore. I do or don't, whatever. I'm happy either way. Oh, that's another one I would say. It's definitely like, I'm happy. Now here's what's really, really cool. 
Let's suppose my new color is green instead of that red. And all of this is green now. So in the space of green, this becomes my new set point. And if this is my new set point, then how does life have to be? Green. And how will I experience people as green? And how will I cause people to be green? So in other words, I'll have people in my life that help me be happy to feel loved and to know that everything's all right. God's got me. So I will be attracted to the green people. And then people that be whatever color, I'll see them as green and people will live into our expectations. So I'll cause them to become green. And then people who share this kind of belief subconsciously will be attracted to me because they see it in me and they want more of it in their life. So they're going to hang out with me. And people that don't believe this are going to subconsciously be pushed away. And I will make conscious choices to move them out of my life so that I have more space for the green. And that's how the rich get richer emotionally, mentally, physically, financially, and the poor don't. So dynamic life, you guys, that's why I'm wearing this. And I'm so passionate about this. This is the most emotionally taxing, physically taxing event I do because there's so much energy that goes into it. And I was doing it a few years ago. And I'm like, I was praying. I was like, God, show me to do this because it just wears me out. And what I got by the end, I'm like, show me how much money I need to charge. You know, what I should do about this. And the answer I got was I won't do this for money because there's not enough money in the world for the emotional toll it takes, but I'll do it for the lives it changes. So why do we charge? Because if you don't put money down, you're not really invested. And part of the breakthrough is paying for yourself. Part of a breakthrough of changing your life is paying the money to change your life. So if you're interested, dynamic life might be for you. This is it, baby. Can we check it if there's any more comments or questions? Yeah, and then we're gonna, we're gonna wrap this up, you guys. And thanks for joining. It has been awesome. Hey, wow. It's like old home week. This is awesome. Some of the people, Alfredo, buddy from Vegas. Good to see you. Lawrence Borkstrom. Hope you're on the road driving yeah. safe. He's a driver. She had longer legs. Harold said she had longer legs. He's a dummy. He's talking about when I drew the, the woman with the, the projector screen. Oh, he, oh, he's making a yeah, joke. Yeah, your, your stick figure. Janelle, good to see you. Trey Richards. Hey, Amy. High hopes. Ropes was looking. Yeah, Amy. We're going to do deep. And you guys, it's, it's not about proving you're good enough to overcome the ropes because that's just flipping the coin, proving you're good enough. What we want to do instead is obliterate the deep seated negative, put in positive seeds. So that then, look, if we plant a, a field of seeds with the right seeds and the right conditions, it just grows naturally. And if we plant the right seeds of abundance, love, joy, health, and prosperity in your life in the right conditions, it's just going to grow naturally. doesn't mean you don't got to work. You got to work. But instead of fighting against the wrong seeds, you now have the right seeds growing. So I love you guys. And this is your invitation. A new year, a new you. Dynamic Life is January 28 through 31. We have special pricing going on for this one. So if you're interested, PM me. We'll have a private conversation about it. No one will know we chat it. And it's going to be an awesome environment. We have people say it is the most fun they've ever had. And I've had many people say it's the most powerful event they've ever been to. And these are people who have been to a lot of events, like my friend Vince. But what? Huh? what are you laughing about? I was, I was thinking about my, my task my task to go to used clothing stores for this event. Oh, we'll say no more. <laughs> we do some, uh, what she's referencing is we have uh, like a scavenger hunt, but it's not like go get a bobby pin. It's go convince, it, it's designed to have you play the game of life full out to discover that really when you have fun and you're playing full out, you get the best results and when you do it with people. So we put you in an Absolutely. awesome team and we have competition. Uh, one person wins a prize with over three thousand dollars, and um, uh, but one of the tasks might be something like have a cop write you a ticket for being too cool. So you got to <laughs> practice your persuasion and influence. We're going to teach you some high level persuasion because it's not enough to change yourself. We then need to give you the tools to go out and change the world so that who and what you become spreads through the world and you have more of the life you want. So I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in to Speak Easy with Jace. We will see you every Tuesday, same bat time, same bat channel. Thanks for tuning in. We love you guys. Love PM you guys. us for info. Bye. Bye.